All right, and we're back now. So what what we did here, you probably got some numbers close to this as well. Uh, I got, if I use two seconds here, I get negative 80.989. If I use 2.5 seconds, I get negative 88.989 feet per second. And what we're doing here is, so we found it from when he, the average velocity was from when he fell down was the starting time till he hit. He found the slope of that line right there. Well, what happens if we used from one second? Okay, at one second, found he had an average velocity from one second until he hit of negative 64.9898, eh, about 65. What about from two seconds? This is total, this is after one second. After two seconds. So two seconds right here finding that slope, I found that slope to get the average velocity over that short a period of time. What about after three seconds, or 2.5 seconds? Well, let's actually do three seconds here, because that's what I did down at the bottom. If I'm gonna mess, estimate his velocity at impact, what I did is I took the, uh, his average velocity, but I made it over a really, really, really tiny time interval, okay? So 0 0.06 seconds. So in those 0 0.06 seconds, that change in time, his change in height was six feet. Right there, he was six feet above the ground. When he hits, he is zero feet above the ground, so he falls six feet in 0 0.061862 seconds. That means he's going about 97 feet per second. Okay. So what I did is to find his velocity to impact, I just found it something really, really close to the ground. And this should sound familiar. If I want to try to find something really, really close, I can use a limit. I just need to make sure the limit's getting really, really close to it. Okay, and what this is doing is, so instead of using after two seconds, so one second, and two seconds, I used it at three seconds. Get my marker. Which is a very, very small time interval. The closer we get that, the closer we get it to the, the second he hit, the more accurate it's gonna be. So if we have to find the velocity when he, hit, he hits, we wanna find the time really, really close. How does that happen? Well, here it is. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the limit as uh, the change in time approaches zero. So this is the change in time right here. We want that to approach zero. Now we can't actually use zero, because if we use zero, change in height divided by the change in time, if, you, if we actually plug in zero there, we've killed a puppy. You can't divide by zero but we're gonna use a number really, really close to zero to find the change in height over the change in time. In this case, which is, is velocity. So change in height over the change in time, we're just, we're gonna make it really, really small time interval here. Okay, which is why I used this number right here. Okay, so that's the kind of the idea of what's going on here in this problem. We'll get the formal definition in just a moment. Let's flip this over to the back side. 
All right, slope of, we're going to find the slope of f of x, which is the square root of x plus 1, from negative 1 to 3, and we're going to find the change in x. The change in x is the interval. Well, from negative 1 to 3, the change in x there is going to be 4. Uh, change in x here is going to be 3. From 1 to 3, change in x here is 2. From here to here, it's going to be 1. Uh, let's try some numbers close here. Let's try 2.9 to 3. So here would be 0 0.5. Here would be 0 0.1. So we're going to do the same thing coming from the other direction. From 3 to 7, 4. 3 to 1, 3 to 3.5, 3 to 3.1, it's going to be 0.1. So to find the slope over this interval, we're going to take, take the uh, change in y values of the change in x values. All right, so, well, this one, the first one's pretty easy here. If I find the change in the, if I plug in the y values, just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we're going to get, if I plug in 3 for the first one, we're going to get the square root of 4, which is 2. Plug in negative 1 for that, so we're going to get 0. So 2 over the change in x is 4. So we're going to get one half. Okay. I'm going to let you. I'm going to stop here and let you fill the rest of those in. What we're going to try to do here is we're going to we're going to estimate the slope f of x at three. Well, if we can find points really really close to it, points really really close, I'll bet we can get a pretty good estimate for the slope of f at three. We can't actually. We can't find the slope right at a single point because you need two points for slope, but maybe we can get a good estimation. I'll stop, let you fill out the table here.